Hey everybody, welcome back to a brand new Cabral Concept. So glad to be chatting with you here today. You're going to want to head on over to stephencabral.com slash 3121 for the three big takeaways today as well as all of the research links because we're going to be going over a controversial topic. I've gotten so many direct messages on Instagram, on social media, on YouTube saying that berberine is unhealthy for the liver that it causes liver toxicity-based issues. Now, I am one to keep an open mind. So I say, okay, maybe there's some research that I haven't seen that could cause liver toxicity with this herb berberine. And why would that matter? Well, it's because berberine has been shown to help with unhealthy levels of oxidized cholesterol in the body. It's been shown to help with insulin dysregularity, helping women with PCOS, uh, helping individuals with type 2 diabetes, or at least with blood sugar dysregulation. Of course, I have to give you my disclaimer now that I can't provide any medical plans, medical treatment, medical treatment plans, medical cures, medical diagnosis, or medical advice. But what I want to share with you is that berberine works. It works phenomenally well when taken two to three times a day at 500 milligrams typically with meals. And so it's just divided dosages, usually one at breakfast, one at lunch, one at dinner, or just one at breakfast and one at dinner at 500 milligrams each time. So, and it's always worked really well. I mean, that like, that's the thing. This is not a new herb. It's been used for thousands of years in traditional Chinese medicine, as well as Ayurvedic medicine with no talk of any liver toxicity based issues. But again, the first, you know, the first thing you do, especially as a doctor of naturopathy or any health practitioner, is that you want to do no harm for your wellness clients, patients, etc. So I look into it and I say, okay, let's find these studies on liver toxicity. And this is what I want to share with you here today. So as I'm going through the studies, I am looking specifically for animal-based and I'm looking for human-based studies. And this is what I find. So um, again, I'm searching PubMed. That's typically where I go. I'll go to Google Scholar or I'll go to individual places. And so I find this, and I'm going to read it to you exactly. This is a meta-analysis um, from uh, uh, individual studies on rat and the animal-based models. This is where people are getting their, their misinformation, unfortunately. So High doses of berberine have been shown to cause liver toxicity in animal studies. Specifically, these studies observe an increase in liver enzymes, such as ALT and AST, which are biomarkers for liver injury. Elevated levels of these enzymes indicate liver cell damage or stress. And so, first of all, this is something I definitely recommend. Every single year, you should have your blood work run, getting your lipid profile, which looks at all your different cholesterol. Uh, you should run your complete blood count. Uh, you should absolutely run your vitamin D3, your AST, your ALT for liver enzymes, etc. So, full blood work panel, definitely recommend that. You don't want elevated liver-based enzymes. And I'm actually going to link up at 3121 today a whole podcast I have, about 15 minutes just on non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. Remember, 20% to up to 40% of all people will suffer from that as an adult. The nice thing is it's reversible. Like That's the great thing about it. So let's. why, why do I mention that? Well, Liver enzymes are an issue with people with non-alcoholic, meaning not from alcohol, fatty liver disease. And so let's look at these models now because they're saying it raises liver enzymes. Keep that in mind. Okay, so in one study, the oral administration of berberine to animals, rats and cats, at high doses, at high dosages resulted in toxic effects. For example, dosages as high as 100 milligrams per kilogram led to GI inflammation and hemorrhage in the studies, and this is in cats. Okay, so I said, all right, interesting. Yes, 100 milligrams per kilogram. Now, we know that in humans, the dosage is what? Typically 1,000 to 1,500 milligrams per day. Okay, so now let's look at that. I'm just gonna take my own weight. I weigh about 76 kilos. So if I go 76 kilos, all right, times 100 milligrams, I'm going to get, should be 7,600, but let's just, let's work on the, uh, the trusty calculator on my, uh, my laptop instead. Okay, so 7,600 milligrams. Now, what did I say? 1,000 to 1,500 milligrams per day for humans. So you would need to take somewhere around five to 700% more, right? Five to seven X more. 
And then there was a second study. So let's read the second study because I want to see exactly where you know, people are getting the information from. Another study showed that in diabetic rats, prolonged administration of berberine at dosages exceeding 50 milligrams per kilogram led to liver tissue damage, meaning that increase in liver enzymes. Okay, so now still, when we're looking at this, we're looking at about 3,500 3, to 4,000 milligrams per day, well above any human dosages that would be taken. That would be like taking how many capsules? Six to eight capsules a day minimum of berberine instead of the two to three. All right, so yes, there are animal studies showing that. Now let's look at human studies. Are there any human studies where uh, berberine is an issue? So go into PubMed, type in basically does har uh, you know harm pathophysiology caused to the liver by ber berberine. This is exactly what it says. It's a full summary. Liver talks, clinical and research information on drug-induced liver injury. And it talks specifically about berberine. Despite wide-scale use as an herbal supplement, berberine has not been linked to published instances of clinical apparent liver injury. So that means that there's lots of studies on berberine. None of them showed any harm to the liver in humans. But let's go on. All right, so there's also a meta-analysis of berberine-based studies that showed significant benefit in those with metabolic conditions, meaning uh, cardiovascular, cholesterol, high blood pressure, type 2 diabetes, uh, and high lipids, right, and potential high triglycerides. And then it showed an actual lowering of liver enzymes, meaning ALT and AST, in individuals with non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. And here's the exact results. So in this case group, the mean serum levels, just that means the blood levels, of ALT and AST decreased for those using 1,500 milligrams, the same exact dosage we recommend, uh, from 49, so a dangerous level of ALT, it went from 49 to 27. And then it went from another dangerous level of AST of 48 to 29. And that is on 1,000 to 1,500 milligrams per day, helping these individuals lower liver enzyme damage, or I should say just liver cell damage and lower their liver enzymes as a result. So not only did berberine not cause liver toxicity, it actually helped those individuals with liver toxicity, specifically non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. So... I bring this up not as, you know, a, um, a scolding at, at all, like in any way, shape or form, because I like to keep an open mind and I like people to let me know, listen, like there might be an issue here, but there was so much talk about berberine leading to liver toxicity and it's just not there. Like it's literally not there. Now, if it is there and I'm missing these studies, even though I did a widespread search, let me know in the comments. I would love to hear, but show me the animal because I'll look at animal studies as well or human-based studies at a dosage that humans would take, not at a dosage that would be, you know, five to seven X, as I said, um, greater than any humans would take. And also, all studies right now point to berberine help, actually helping people lower healthy blood sugar levels, lower to healthy cholesterol levels, and improve overall metabolic function in the body. That includes weight loss, gut function, uh, and mitochondria. So it is a great product. We've been using it for many, many years. And that is why I just want to bring, I mean, again, I don't, I didn't patent berberine, right? So I just want to say that I don't have stock in berberine. Uh, so I just wanted to bring this out to people and share with you. We have to be careful the information that we listen to on social media and that sometimes um, we we spread without actually doing our own research first. So I'm going to link up all these studies for you. The animal-based ones showing the uh, negative reaction at the very high dosages. The positive are all the human-based studies. And I'm going to show you the summary on PubMed as well. All of that will be available at stephencabral.com slash 3121. stephencabral.com slash 3121. For the exact berberine we use, we use something called Berberine Plus, and it actually contains cinnolin as well, which is a very powerful antioxidant from a cinnamon extract. Uh, works incredibly well, as we, we talked about before, uh, for 
balancing healthy levels of blood sugar, healthy levels of cholesterol, uh, healthy gut function, and uh, overall aging and mitochondria and much more. So that's just Equalife Berberine Plus if you're interested, uh, or work with your integrative health practitioner or naturopathic doctor for their recommendations as well. Hopefully this was helpful. Once again, all research at stevencabral.com slash 3121. If this was helpful, do feel free to share it with anyone you believe it could serve. Take care, everybody. Have an amazing rest of the day. Thanks so much for tuning into today's show. Before you go, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I want to make sure that you're getting our daily content, not missing out on anything. Functional medicine, wellness, weight gain, weight loss, anti-aging, living longer, stronger, and all of the most cutting edge research. And if there's any topics you want to hear, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Take care.